Hi guys, Chris Lendrum here from strengthphysio.com and in today's quick conditions we're going to talk about cervical myelopathy. So etiology and pathophysiology. So myelopathy is clinically evident spinal cord dysfunction in the cervical spine. In cervical spine myelopathy this is usually caused by a stenosis of the spinal canal. Um, it can be caused by osteophyte formation uh, ligament and flavum dysfunction which happens um, through age um, or it can be through traumatic causes so not always through degenerative but often it is it then causes uh, or then can cause dynamic pressure on the cord when flexing and extending and um, flexing usually with the um, osteophytes and extending is where the ligament and flavum comes more into play uh, there's also been some ischemia noted um, although the precise mechanisms of this are not yet understood. So the main thing I wanted to go through really today is what, how we'd look for this and how or patterns that you might see with these sorts of patients so that you can flag this up, particularly if you've got someone that's not improving with, with treatment. So subjectively, um, they're going to have obviously pet neck pain and stiffness can be a, a big part of this. It's usually an insidious onset, as I mentioned, it's a lot a lot of it is stenosis due to degenerative changes around the cervical spine, but it can be from traumatic uh, incidences. But usually it would be an insidious, insidious onset over time. Often they'll complain of lots of neck pain previously, episodic in nature, but suddenly it's got worse and they've got some new symptoms. So that's a key thing as well, looking out for new symptoms. A heavy feeling in the legs. You know, we often ask about walking and gait. This is one of the reasons why we're looking for this sort of condition where a funny feeling in the legs, heaviness, balance, coordination, those sorts of things. So yeah, coordinated balance issues when walking is something to be aware of. Also, fine motor skills are reduced in the hands. So things like buttoning a shirt, handwriting, these are things to ask about if you've got someone with neck pain that you think could have a cervical myelopathy. They can have radicular pains into the arms um, or into the legs um, when bending of the head forwards um, so that's what one test you can do if you get them to quickly bend their head forwards do they get the shooting pain in the arms and in the legs but that's again something more for the objective arm pain which can often be bilateral um, because obviously if you've got a stenotic pressure on the spinal cord itself and um, then that's going to cause if it's central then it's going to cause more issues in both arms it is rare but you can have um, bladder and bowel issues with this sort of thing. Obviously, if you're affecting the spinal cord, um, then you can uh, expect effects of the long tracts of the spinal cord. So it can have um, effects lower down the body, which is obviously why you're having an impact on the coordination of the legs, etc. It is more rare with this sort of condition, though. So if we go on to the objective, we've got reduced neck range of movement, movement obviously, that you'd see. Um, sensory loss in the upper limbs. So when you do your neuro exam, you might have some sensation loss. Atrophy in the hands, so important to look at the hands with um, a cervical spine type disorder, especially if you've noticed some of these things in the subjective that you're querying um, a hypothesis of cervical spine myelopathy. Uh, increased tone in the legs, so when you do your muscle testing, um, and then decreased, or oh, sorry, increased deep tendon reflex in the lower body or in the upper body as well. Possibly might have a clonus um, or, and also Hoffman's reflex. So if you have a look at how, obviously if you know how to do those, great. If you don't know how to do those, then have a look because they're important for um, pathophysiology of the spinal cord. The Binsky test could be positive as well. So again, just suggesting some upper motor neurone type um, positive signs. And also looking at gait. So looking at gait, looking whether that um, looks normal, whether it's compromised. Also, it could be normal in people with um, early signs of cervical myopathy. So what you could do is things like a tightrope walk, just making that gait a little bit more challenging. Now, obviously, you know what you're trying to do with this is put a picture together, the whole picture, subjective, objective. You know, you're not just going to take any one of these tests and say, yep, that's cervical myopathy. It's trying to put everything, all the pieces together. So differential diagnosis with this sort of condition, um, spinal tumour, syringulomyelia, that's a mouthful to say, metastatic disease of the spine, um, severe disc herniation, and MS or ALS. So the main ones really there, I would say, would be the MS, ALS, metastatic disease, spinal tumour, basically things that are causing a stenotic compression on the spinal cord. Um, obviously, if you, if you felt that there was a, a compression on the spinal cord, 
um, then you would want, you know, and you had a lot of these symptoms, they're, they're classed as, a lot of these things would be classed as red flags and probably would be a good idea to check um, through imaging and through onward referral exactly what's going on. So the management of these conditions, now obviously if you've got someone that's going to, that's having a worsening case of neurology, then often they will do surgery to decompress the spine. And this is essentially to look at reducing the long-term impact um, of function. So, you know, if someone's getting a lot worsening neurology, i.e. weakness in the arms and the legs, um, bladder or bowel symptoms, um, weakness in the arms, muscle atrophy, all these sorts of things, then they may well suggest that doing surgery to decompress the spine in order to stop that progressive neurology is important because it, it helps to uh, increase or improve long-term function. Um, if stable, so you might get someone that you send off for imaging, etc., and and actually the symptoms have not changed that much, or they've had the sorts of symptoms for a while. It's been more of a chronic condition. Um, then they may consider some physio first, um, and this is going to consist of just working on the the tissues around the neck, working on restoring as much mobility as possible through exercise and through education, um, and just like you would with a you know a normal degenerative cervical spine condition, which often these sorts of things are are to do with. Uh, and see you know how much progress you can make now obviously if that um, progresses things and you can get someone to self-manage then great if not then you've always got that option of on referral so that is a really quick um, whistle stop tour in our quick conditions uh, video of the cervical spine myelopathy hopefully that gives you an idea of some things to look out for and um, just so that you can create some some pattern recognition and make sure when you're doing your subjective and objective you're thinking about this sort of condition in the spine because it's something that that can be um, needed to to refer onwards hopefully you enjoyed the video guys please like and subscribe to the channel um, and i will see you on the next uh, video